What's going on everybody? So today I'm going to be showing you how to create this really cool HTML, CSS and JavaScript application. It is a weather application as you can see. We've got the title here, we've got the search bar and a little search button. So we're going to hop right into it. If I type in a city name like Sydney for example and click the search button, you can see that a little PNG image pops up of what the weather is doing right now. And you can also see that the temperature is in big bold writing there. We've got the name of the city underneath and the status of what the weather is doing right now. If you go down the bottom here and scroll across, you can see the next 24 hours forecasted here. And it's got a little PNG image there for what each of those hours is doing, as well as the temperature and the time. So just to prove that this works with other cities as well, I'm going to go back up here to the search bar and type in another city like London, for example. We search and it is currently three degrees in London with uh, broken clouds, a little bit overcast, and you can see the 24 hour forecast there as well. Okay, so let's try another city right now, Los Angeles. And if we click the search bar, you can see that it is nighttime right now. There's a clear sky and you can see the next 24 hours forecasted there as well. So if you guys like the look of that, then keep watching and I'm going to be showing you how to create this in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It's going to be in pure vanilla JavaScript as well, so there's not going to be any libraries or frameworks. So uh, yeah, if uh, that looks good to you, let's hop right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a folder on our desktop and we're going to call it Weather App. All right, and then we're going to drag that folder into our VS Code or any IDE that you guys want to use. Just for the purpose of this tutorial, though, I'm going to be using uh, VS Code. It's the one I'm most familiar with and the one that most people use nowadays. So yeah, once you've done that, we need to create our files. We're going to create our index.html file and then we're going to create our style.css file. And then straight after that, what we're going to do is create our script.js file. Now the first thing we're going to do is focus on the HTML, so let's hop straight into that now. We're just going to create this quick little boilerplate code here, it's basically what's going to be holding our HTML code. Uh, we've got the head and the body elements as you can see there. And within the head element, what you're going to want to make sure is you define these, uh, these meta tags right here and also the title tag and link our style sheet. So. The most important one is obviously going to be our style sheet. We want to make sure that we link it. We have named our file style.css. So making sure that we do indeed use that, uh, that same value in our href uh, attribute here. So the next thing we're going to be doing is hopping into the body tag and creating a div element. We're going to give that an ID of weather container. And then we're also going to create a H2 element and uh, it's just going to basically be the title of our uh, program. We're just going to put weather app for now. And then we've also got an input tag here as well. We're going to give it a type of text, an ID of city and a placeholder of enter city. So that placeholder is basically just going to prompt the user uh, to yeah, obviously you know enter a city that they want to check the weather for. Then we're going to have the uh, button element here and when we click the button element we're going to call a function called get weather. That button is going to be labeled as search so the user will know what to do and that get weather function will be implemented in our JavaScript a little bit later in this video. Once you've done that, we're also gonna add an image tag in here and give it an ID of weather icon. And we're also going to add three more div elements. Now these div elements are basically what's gonna hold all our information about the weather on that particular city that you've typed in. So the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, name the first div temp div. So that's just gonna be holding our temperature. And the next one will have an ID of weather info and the next one will be hourly forecast so those are pretty self-explanatory those are the what they're going to be holding we're going to the second div will be holding the weather info like the uh you know what's going on in the city right now just a quick little description and the hourly forecast will obviously be the section where we want to display all the you know the coming the next 24 hour forecast for that city once we've done that, we want to make sure that we include our JavaScript file. This is very important, otherwise our program will have no functionality. It'll just be a static web page. So what we want to do is make sure we put that script tag in there, give the source attribute a value of uh, period slash script.js because that is what we've named our, uh, our JavaScript file and make sure we close it off at the end there as well. So that is our whole index.html file. There is nothing more you need to do for that. So the next thing that we're gonna do is hop straight into the style.css file. So this is what we have right now with our HTML code guys. As you can see, it's not very pretty. There's not a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's just the bare skeleton of our program. And uh, that's all right because we're gonna hop right into the CSS now and we're gonna make this look pretty, give it some styling and uh, yeah. So let's hop straight into that now. 
So the first thing we're gonna do in our CSS is create a uh, body tag here. And then within that body tag, we're gonna make sure that we set the background to this color here. It's that nice purple color that I always like to use. If you guys watched the previous videos, you know that is my favorite color to use on this channel right now. Um, so once you put that in, you wanna focus on the font family attribute here. Now we're gonna give this a uh, bit of a different, a uh, bit of a different font today. Um, I'm not super sure how to pronounce this. I'm gonna go with Sego UI and we're gonna back it up with Tahoma. Geneva, Vedana, and Sans Serif. So those are going to be the fonts that uh, will work if uh, either one of these fonts do not load on your particular browser or web page. And then we're going to give it a display of flex and align the items to the center whilst justifying the content to be in the center as well. We're going to give a 100% uh, vertical height there and a margin of zero. And then after that, we're going to target the weather container ID. So in order to set the color for this uh, background, we're gonna be using an RGBA uh, function here. It's going to basically consist of uh, 255, 255, 255, and 0.3. Now the max width will be 400 pixels with a padding of 20 pixels as well. The border radius will be 15 pixels and the box shadow will be uh, this value right here. Now that's just gonna give the box, our little, our container here, a nice little uh, drop shadow, which is going to, um, you know, fade back onto our purple background. It's just gonna make it look a little bit more minimalistic and uh, modern. So the backdrop filter as well, will have a blur of 10 pixels. And we're also gonna create a uh, border radius here of one pixel solid, and then we're gonna use that RGBA color there as well. And then the text will be aligned to the center. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna target the H2 elements in our program as well as the labels and the paragraph elements. Now, these are gonna be given a color of uh, hashtag FFF, which is just a nice white color, a margin of eight pixels. So for our input element, we're gonna calculate the width to be 100% minus 16 pixels, depending on the size of the window at the time. The padding will be eight pixels. The box sizing will have a value of border box. Border radius will be 10 pixels and the border will be a nice one pixel solid white color. Our margin top will be 20 pixels just to separate the gap there from the title a little bit. And now for targeting our button element, we're gonna give it a background color of hashtag DEBFF4. So that'll just be a, uh, just a different type of purple color. It's just to make the UI uh, look a little bit nicer. You can choose any colors you want. You don't have to go by this as well. You can change any of this uh, as you like. The color will be white, so that'll be for the text. The padding will be 10 pixels. The border will be none, so we, we do not want a border. The value must be none on that. And the border radius, it will be 10 pixels. So it'll create a nice little curve there on our button. The cursor will be set to pointer. So what happens there is that when the um, cursor is uh, over the top of our button, it turns into that nice pointer. Um, icon there and then our margin top will be given a value of 20 pixels our width will be set to 100 pixels and our font size to 15. When we hover over the top of the button we want the background to change slightly to a uh, different type of purple there and that's just going to basically show us that we are you know in fact over the top of the button and it is ready to click it's just a nice little ui ux element there that you can add and now we're going to target the paragraph element inside our temp div so the font size here will be set to 60 pixels and the margin top will be a negative 30 pixels so that'll blend nicely uh, with what's above it and then our weather info will have a font size of 20 pixels our weather icon will also have a width of 200 pixels and a height of 200 pixels, so a nice square shape. Our margin will be set to zero, auto and 10 pixels, and our margin bottom will be zero itself. And then the display will be none, because we don't want that weather icon to be displayed the whole time, only after we've searched up the particular city. So now we're going to target our hourly forecast and our hourly items uh, class and ID. So for the hourly forecast, we're going to give it a margin top of 50 pixels, an overflow X value of auto. Our white space will have no wrap, a display will be flex, and our justify content will be put as the space between. Our hourly item class will have a flex of 00 auto, a width of 80 pixels, a display of flex, and a flex direction of column. Our items will be aligned in the center, and the margin right will be 10 pixels. We're also going to give the text a color of white. We're going to target the hourly item image and also the hourly heading. So for the image, we want it to be 30 pixels by 30 pixels. So obviously much smaller than our uh, previous image that we had up there as the main uh, weather PNG. That was 200 pixels. These ones are going to be a little bit smaller, obviously, because we need to fit more of them along the bottom. Uh, so this will be for the hourly forecast. And then the margin bottom will be five pixels. 
After that, the hourly heading will be given a color of white, hashtag FFF, and then the margin top will be 10 pixels. All right guys, so now after our CSS, this is what we have so far. So obviously we're not gonna have any functionality um, to this particular application right now because there's no JavaScript involved yet. Um, but as you can see, it looks a lot nicer than just our pure HTML that we had before. Uh, we've got the nice container here, and then we've also got our nice uh, input field and our search button with the nice hover effect there. So if I type in a city right now, um, and try and search something, it is not going to search. Obviously, like I said before, there is no functionality here. So, and so what we're gonna do now is hop straight into our JavaScript and get our program working the way we want it to be. Okay guys, so the first thing that you're gonna do is head over to openweathermap.org and we're gonna create an account on this website. So this is how we're gonna be able to get all the weather and all the information for the particular cities that you guys wanna type up in the program. So in order to do that, we need to, uh, we need to integrate an API. So the first thing you're gonna do is create an account. And once you've done that, you're gonna go into this account section here and go down to my API keys. Now I've already got one here that I've set up. Um, it's blurred out obviously, because that is my own uh, API key. But what you're gonna do, you won't have any there. You're gonna generate your own here, okay? And you can call it whatever you want. Uh, mine's just called new key. And then it's gonna give you this code here. Now make sure you copy that and you save it to your clipboard because that's gonna become very important later. All right guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do in our script.js file is we're gonna define a get weather function, okay? So this is obviously gonna be the function that gets uh, the weather, it's pretty self-explanatory. And this is the one that we call when we click our button. So the first thing that we're gonna do is define the open weather map API key, all right? So we're gonna create a const variable and name it API key, and it's gonna be equal to that API key that I got you guys to save to your clipboard before. So all you're gonna do is uh, copy and paste it in the quotation marks there, and that is it, that's, uh, that's defined, it's linked now. And now we can use that API key to perform different tasks in our program. Next thing we're gonna do is get the value entered by the user in the city input field. So we are going to create a const variable and name it city. We are going to target the city ID by using the document.get element by ID. And we're gonna obviously get the value out of that. So, so the next thing we're gonna do is check if the input is empty. And if it is, we're gonna show an alert and uh, exit the function. So if there is no nothing typed in our input bar and the user goes to click the button, we're just gonna get an alert here that says, please enter a city. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna construct the URLs for the current weather and forecast based on the entered city and the API key. So we're gonna define two uh, const variables here. One will be called constant, uh, sorry, current weather URL, and it will be equal to this URL here. So you can uh, pause right now and uh, just type that one out, and make sure that you make sure you assign them in uh, quotation marks here as well. That will be the value of our current weather URL, and do the same for the forecast URL. So, so after that, what we're going to do is fetch the current weather data using the current URL. So we're going to pass the response as uh, a JSON, and then we're going to call the display weather function with that received data. If there is an error, we're going to log the error message to the console and show an alert uh, if there's an issue fetching that data, and the alert will obviously say uh, error fetching current weather data, and then print out the error as well. And we'll get an alert saying that's uh, the same thing, error fetching current weather data, please try again. So after we've done that, we wanna fetch the hourly forecast data from the forecast URL. And to do that, we are going to pass the response as JSON and then call the display hourly forecast function with the received data. So we're then going to uh, obviously do some error handling here again, and we're gonna log the error message to the console and show an alert if there's been any issues uh, with the fetching of that data. Uh, so very similar to what we did here when we, when we were fetching the current weather data using the current weather URL variable. After that, that is our uh, get weather function done. Now we're gonna move on and start implementing our display weather function. This particular function is responsible for updating the HTML elements with information about all the current weather that's based on the data received by the Open Weather Map API. So basically, the first thing we're gonna do is get references to all the HTML elements uh, where the weather information will be displayed. So we're going to define these four const variables here, temp div info, weather info div, weather icon, hourly forecast div, and those are all going to be uh, targeting the HTML elements using the document.get element by ID methods, okay? 
and make sure that those match up to the correct uh, variables as well. So just uh, pause on screen now and make sure that you've got those all correct. So these elements are gonna be containers where weather related information will be displayed. The next thing we're gonna do is clear all the previous content in these HTML elements below here. So basically what this is gonna do is just ensure that all the uh, new weather information is displayed clearly and there's not gonna be any existing content that we're gonna to have to worry about. So this is very important. It's gonna check if the received data contains an error code. And uh, if that error is detected, then it's gonna display an error message in the weather info div. All right, so after that guys, we're going to extract any relevant information from this data. So if there's no error detected, um, it's gonna extract relevant data information from that data. And it's gonna include the city name, the temperature converted to Celsius and the weather description and the icon code underneath. So after you've done that, we are going to focus on creating uh, HTML content for the temperature, the city name, and the description. We're going to assign that to two variables here, temperature HTML and weather HTML. Then after that, we're going to set the HTML content for the temperature, the city name, and the description elements, and they're going to equal the uh, temperature. So the temp div info in a HTML will equal the temperature HTML. The weather info div dot in a HTML will equal the weather HTML. So what we're doing here is setting the source and alternative text for the weather icon image based on the icon code received from the API. And then after that, the function will call the show image function to make the weather icon image visible. Now this is usually triggered after setting the source and alt text to ensure that the image is displayed. So yeah, basically, so basically the whole idea of this function is to take the weather data, extract relevant information, update the HTML elements within the current weather details, and then display an error message if there's gonna be an issue with the API request. All right guys, now we're gonna focus on the display hourly forecast function. So in order to implement this, the first thing that we're gonna do is get uh, a reference to the HTML element where the hourly forecast information will be displayed. So. This is just basically going to retrieve a reference to the HTML element uh, with the ID hourly forecast. And this is, uh, this is gonna be a container where the hourly forecast information will be displayed. After that, we are going to uh, display the next 24 hours in three hour intervals. We're basically gonna be taking the hourly data received from the API and we're gonna slice that data for the next 24 hours uh, into three hour intervals. So we're gonna use this slice function here and uh, we're gonna extract the first eight items uh, from the hourly data. After that, we are going to iterate over each of the hourly data items and create HTML content to display. Um, so it's gonna use a for each loop to iterate over each item in the next 24 hours array. And for each item it extracts, uh, it's going to extract relevant information like the, like the data, the time, the temperature that's gonna be converted to Celsius obviously, and the uh, weather icon code. Next up, we're going to be creating a uh, we're going to be creating some HTML content, and uh, this is basically going to create a uh, a HTML string, and it's going to be assigned to a variable hourly item HTML, and this is going to be so this is going to be the uh, basically the string for each hourly forecast item. So the string includes an hour, an image tag for the weather icon, and the temperature and that'll be all nice and neatly packaged into that one uh, variable hourly item HTML. And then after that, what we're gonna do is we are going to append the created HTML content to the hourly forecast div. So we're gonna use the plus equals operator and it's gonna be used to add each of the new HTML strings to the existing content in the hourly forecast div. So yeah, basically that's the entire function done for that particular function. And it basically, in summary, takes the hourly weather, extracts the relevant information for the next 24 hours, and then creates HTML content for each hour. And then that HTML content will be updated in the container hourly forecast div with all of its relevant information. Okay, now for the last function in our JavaScript file, we're gonna be implementing a show image function. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna get reference to a icon image element. So we're gonna create a const variable here and we're gonna name it weather icon. And we're gonna use the document.getElementID to extract the, uh, or reference rather, the weather icon uh, HTML element. And then after that, we're gonna be changing the CSS style here for that weather icon div and we are going to make the image visible once it's been loaded. So it's basically gonna uh, set the display property of the weather icon element to block. 
and this particular CSS property is going to control the visibility of the element and by setting it to block what we're doing is making the image uh, obviously become visible on the web page. Alright guys, so that is the end of our program. We finished everything we need to do. Um, what you can do is you can open this up in your web browser and uh, just to make sure that everything is working correctly. For example, right now I'm going to type in uh, Sydney and we'll see what the weather is doing there. So as you can see, we have our icon here to our visual description basically of what the weather's doing in Sydney. We've got in big font the temperature and then we've also got uh, obviously the name of our city there and just a light little description here about what's going on uh, weather-wise in Sydney right now. Then underneath we have our little uh, slider here which is going to show us the hourly forecast so every three hours for the next 24 hours about what's going to be happening in Sydney. We've got the time the icon to uh, visually represent what the temperature is going to be like and we're also going to have the uh, temperature in degrees Celsius here as well. Now to test this out in another city we can type in Brisbane for example, search that up and it is currently 27 in Brisbane and everything is looking correct in regards to formatting. So yeah that is basically all there is to this web application guys. If you did enjoy the video please make sure to like, comment and subscribe, it really does help. I know it's been a while since I uploaded, um, I've been very busy with university and uh, work and all that stuff. So. I'm going to make sure that I'm uploading a lot more frequently now. I've also noticed that there have been a lot of people commenting that they would like more commentary during the uh, JavaScript tutorial um, section of the videos and I'm uh, obviously I'm listening to that and I'm going to be commenting uh, more on uh, basically what all the code does. And uh, yeah, hopefully that helps you guys out just a little bit more. So yeah, if you guys did like the video, make sure you comment below what you would like me to build next, what other tutorials and videos you'd like me to make. And uh, yeah, until next time, I will catch you guys later.